Okay, Psalms chapter 141, a Psalm of David. Lord, great way to start off, Lord first. I cry unto thee. That's who we should cry unto, cry unto the Lord. Make haste, hurry up God unto me. There you go. I prayed to the Lord, I, I cried unto the Lord. Lord, come on, hurry up. Uh, you know, with my prayer, people, you ought to have patience. You ought to have patience. You haven't studied your Bible because David says, hurry up, Lord. Come on. What are you going to do with that? Give ear unto my voice. How dare you say God's not listening to you? David says, come on, hear my voice, will you? Will you hurry up? When I cry unto thee. The people who speak up don't know nothing. They haven't lived a true Christian life. Let my prayer be set, let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense. And that incense is a picture of prayer. When John the Father John the Baptist's father goes in and offers the incense, it's the time of prayer. In the book of Revelation, the incense that goes up before God is prayer. David knew that. A sweet smell to God. And the lifting up of my hands. So David lifted up his hands as the even sacrifice. And that would be the wave offering. Like I said, I, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, I don't know, to me, it, it's, you know, these religions have messed everything up. It's too Pentecostal. And I'm wrong. I'll tell you right now, I'm wrong. I'm trying to do it. But man, I just get that. This feels so Pentecostal. I'm wrong. Set a watch. So, when you bought a watch when I was growing up as a kid, what would the thing call? You would have to set your watch. Where did that come from? It come out of the King James Bible. That's a guard or a watch, man, that's what it means. Set a watch, put a guard, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the doors of my lips. He's saying, God, shut me up. Don't let me say too much. And that's the whole aspect of James talking about the tongue. Man talks too much. Jesus said, every idle word man shall give an account. Preachers are just known for too much talking. Incline not my heart to any evil thing. Incline is going up. So Lord, shut me up and let me not go up into evil to practice wicked work with men that work iniquity I don't even want to be involved with work wicked work I don't want to be involved with evil things and I don't want to be involved with men with, with that work in iniquity I need your help Lord so the temptations there for David and saying Lord I need help the temptation is there to keep talking when you shouldn't be talking. I believe it was Martin, no, Martin Luther or, or one of the Wesley brothers, I forget which one. 15 minutes and he was done with the conversation, he would leave. He believed a man should only speak for 15 minutes. And that would be it. There are some tribes, I believe in Africa, when they do their court proceeding, a man would, would stand on one leg and he can talk as long as he's standing on one leg. Once he puts his foot down or falls down, he's done talking. And then verse four, 
to go after the wicked person. David says, Lord, I need your help. That wicked person may be a best friend, maybe somebody you like, or maybe. And look at all the trouble David had with his own personal family. And I'm talking about Joab. I'm talking about his sons. I bet you it hurt David's heart. And we know it did when it came to Absalom. Man, he's mourning boo-hooing over Absalom. And, and Joab is angry. And let me not eat of their dainties. Now that's specialty sugary kind of food. Those those little those nice little cookies, those little nice little uh, uh, torts, and you know when you go over to the bakery section of, of the place, those, those sweet things. What are you saying? Be careful when somebody comes bringing food. Listen, food is what got us in trouble. One piece of fruit. And we're warned about that, that dainties of a king and all that by Solomon in the book of Proverbs. So what's the first thing a couple do when, when they start dating? He brings them chocolates. And chocolates in a heart. And, you know, all kinds of food and all that trying to win you. He's trying to get to your heart, to your stomach, and it's Bible. I bet you don't even know why they do it. Let the righteous smite me. Reproof me. So Lord, keep my mouth shut. Lord, let me not work with wicked and evil people. And the right people, the godly people, let him smite me. And that's not hitting... It's not using a sword, reproving me. Walking up to me like Nathan did and said, Thou art the man. David, come here for a minute. Yes, what? What you just did, what you just said, your actions. That was unprofessional. I do that with Christians. I, you know, I get told, you know, mind your own business and all that. I will mind, I will mind my own business when they tell me that. All right, I'm done. I had a guy recently. I corrected him three times. He was wrong, totally wrong. And he told me he got mad at me and he was sorry and he won't have anything to do with me no more. All right, fine. I'll leave you alone. But that's not the attitude of David. I had a man come up to me one time. I don't remember who it was. When I first started getting the, the gospel jack, I thought they were collectors. I thought they were supposed to collect them like, you know, trading cards. Then the guy took me aside and he reproved me to show me how to use and what gospel tracks are really for. And that has set forth me many years of gospel track. Because a Christian came up to me and reproved me for good. And there's many things I think about today. As somebody's come up to me and say, you know, you, you shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't be doing that. And there's still in my head. And I, we're not always going to take it all happy go lucky, But you know what? I'm thinking of thing right now. A guy told me one time. And it's now I still. And I was unsaved and he was unsaved. When a Christian comes up to you and... By, by yourself, I mean, he doesn't do it before people, and he's trying to say, with with a Bible, with the Bible, trying to correct an error that you did, don't get mad, he cares about you. David says, reprove me. It shall be a kindness. And let him reprove me. There you go. And it shall be excellent oil, which shall not break my head. Listen, that if that godly man or that Christian comes up to you, and he's trying to help you in the Lord, and he's prayed about it, and you are in the wrong, it's like that olive oil being anointing that David was anointed by. And it's not to take off your neck, 
It's not to hang you. It's to give you life and to make you more pleasing to God. So David says, Lord, shut my mouth. Lord, let me not work with the wicked people and let the godly come up and help me. And a lot of times you go up to these Christians and many Christians, they're gone from my life because I tried helping them. And I'm the mean, nasty, wicked one. And I look at many of their lives right now, looking back, some of them, some of them are not even in church. And I'm not talking about the churches being closed. When the churches were open, they weren't in the church. Their lives are... I mean, if they're not going to listen to a fellow Christian, they're not going to listen to God. David said, bring it on. For yet my prayer also shall be in their, cl their calamity. When their judge... Wait a minute. Yeah. When their judges are overthrown in stony places, they shall fear my words, for they are sweet. So reprove me, it shall be excellent oil, which shall not break my head, for yet my prayer shall be in their clarity. When their judges are overthrown in stony places. We're going back to the wicked people again. Not talking about the, the righteous taking care of them. He says, their judges are overthrown in the story place. They shall hear my word, for they are, they are sweet. I'm trying to help others too. When you try to help a fellow man of God in the Old Testament, Christian, you're trying to help each other out and you're encouraging each other. It's sweet. Our bones are scattered at the grave's mouth. Where death is, where the cemetery is, where the graveyard is, there's just piles of bones. They haven't been buried. And when one cutteth and cleaveth wood upon the earth, they're just stacked up like you see wood piles stacked up. Somebody's cutting trees down, and they chop the wood, they split the wood, and they just make piles. The tree is no longer together. It's not a tree. It's been chopped down in different pieces. Our bones have been broken. Our bones have been scattered. Our bones have not the way the body of the skeleton is. But my eyes are on thee. He says, Let the righteous smite me, it shall be kindness. Let him reprove me. And it shall be excellent oil, which shall not break my head. It's not going to kill me. For yet my prayer shall be in their calamity. There's trials, there's troubles, there's... And someone's trying to help me out of those troubles and problems. And yet together, as I'm saying Christian, together, godly in the Old Testament... We're going to go through problems. We're going to go through defeats. But we're trying to help each other. We're trying to encourage each other. For my eyes are upon thee, God, O God the Lord. In thee is my trust. Solomon tells in the book, book of Proverbs a few times, don't put your trust in man. David's not putting no trust in politicians. David's not putting any trust in any man but God. Leave not my soul destitute, alone, all by itself. And that would probably have an implication to hell when a soul goes, goes off in hell. He's older, outer darkness. And he's really alone, even though there are people there, he can't see him. Keep me from the snares as a trap, which they have laid for me, the wicked, and the gins as a trap, of the workers of iniquity. There are people out there setting traps for me. It'd be nice if somebody came up to me also, here's the enemy setting traps. 
They're trying to catch me. And not only do I want that, that righteous one to come up and say, listen, this is not how you're doing. What you're doing is wrong. But uh, if you go down that avenue, it would have been very fine for somebody to go up to David and saying, uh, you're getting yourself in trouble if you go get that woman Bathsheba. Don't even start. That was a trap by the devil. If somebody went and went up to David beforehand and say, David, you gotta stop that. You got you got enough wives. Nathan would never come up and said, Thou art the man, that baby would never have died. There would have been no death of the four sons of, of David. He says, Listen, four lambs, the baby, Absalom. And then the two other, uh, the two other sons. But there was no one there to stop David. David sent for the none of those men that that went to go get Bathsheba said, David, come here, let's, let's step aside here. Do you know what you're wanting us to do? And yet, after all the sin was done, Nathan was that righteous man to say, Thou art the man. And David was able to give us the, the, the most precious Old Testament repentance. Let the wicked, and again, I show you that's the Antichrist, but let the wicked fall in their own nets. The nets they put for me. And for David and the nation of Israel, I'll curse them that curse you. You want to put a net up for Israel? Wait till you see the net I got for you. Adolf Hitler put a fine, ninety good net before the children of Israel, the Jews. And how far did he get? Supposedly the story is that he, he committed suicide. Probably burning in hell today. Don't mess with them Jews. Wows that I was all escaped. That's Israel in the tribulation period. Uh, Revelation chapter 12 when God gives them wings and provides them a place in the wilderness. As the Antichrist, the devil is chasing them. And he gives them a way to escape. So it's a life of David and it's a life of tribulation. And the second advent. But I don't read the Old Testament. The Old Testament is not important. Man, we're 141 chapters. How much have we studied? The Advent. The Millennium. The Antichrist. All 66 books.